Hi everyone, it's Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. And today on Stamp TV, I have something new for you. This is the first video in a series of videos called Other Ways to Use It. And today I'm going to show you some other ways that you can use dies that you may already have in your collection. I'm also going to show you a couple new products that we've just introduced at GinaKayDesigns.com. Now before we begin, I want to show you the tools and products that you're going to need to make this card project. First, you're going to need some cardstock, and the cardstock that I'm using is the Gina K Designs Layering Weight White, some black onyx, some ocean mist, then I have a little more I have um, a little more white. I have some sweet mango, some more black onyx, and then I have a piece of the Gina K Designs Artist Choice cardstock. I really like to use this cardstock when I'm making cards with Copic markers or colored pencils because this cardstock has just a little bit more tooth to it, and because I'm cutting this out, I don't have to worry about whether or not it's going to bleed through. Now you're also going to need some coloring tools and I'm going to use Copic markers for this and here are the colors that I'm going to use. I'm going to use Tuscan Orange which is YR27. I'm going to use Loquois which is YR12. I'm not sure if I said that right. I'm also going to use YR0000 which is Pale Ch Chiffon. Oh my goodness I need stronger glasses. I'm going to use R32 which is Peach. I'm going to use black 100. I'm going to use the zero pen, which is the Copic blender. And then I'm also going to use E43, which is dull ivory. Now I've got a variety here. I've got chow markers and sketch markers, and you can mix and match those, or you can use colored pencils for this or any other color medium you like. I'm also going to use the mini Misty by My Sweet Petunia, and I also have the new bar magnet. I really like this magnet. This is now available in our online store. I also am going to use some ink and the inks I'm going to use are the Gina K Designs Ocean Mist. I'm also going to use some of the Charcoal Brown. Then I have some Memento Tuxedo Black. Now for dyes I'm going to be using some of the Gina K Designs single stitched ovals. I have both the single stitched and the double stitched here as you can see. And you can use either one of those for this technique but I'm going to use the single stitched. Now I also have some dies here that were part of our last Stamp TV kit. You may remember the Merry and Bright stamp set and there was this tree line in that set. Well the die is this die that matches that tree line stamp. I'm going to just use this die today, not the stamp set. So that's one of the dies I'm going to use in a different way. I'm also going to use the ovals in a different way. And then I just have a couple of circles here. These are by Cherry Lynn Designs. I have a silver circle, a purple circle, and then an inverted circle. Now, I want to show you the brand new, I'm going to use a sponge dauber too. I want to show you the brand new stamps that I'm going to use today. We just introduced these this morning. I love these sets. These are stamp sets that my daughter Alicia drew for Gina K Designs. So the first one is the Frisky Feline set, and this is all cute little cat images with some cat accessories and then cute little greetings like you're always there when I need you and need is spelled like need the way a cat needs their little paws into things and then you're the cat's whiskers cats leave paw prints on our hearts you're the perfect friend and you're positively awesome then she also designed playful pups she drew these this is my little teddy looks like a little Pomeranian or a little wolf style dog and a couple different styles of dogs which are so cute because each one is different and they can be mixed and matched and then some of these cute greetings you make my tail wag what's up dog sorry things are rough you're doggone awesome here's to a day full of belly rubs and puppy treats and dogs leave paw prints on our hearts and then it also has a little bone and a doggy paw print. And you can see the paw prints are different in the sets, so you can also mix and match those together to create fun backgrounds. Now, we're selling this in two different ways. You can get the stamp set only 
for those of you who maybe have a silhouette or a scan and cut and you don't want to buy dies with them. And then we have a special price for those of you that want to buy the stamps and dies together. And they're both packaged together in this package. So you'll not only get that stamp set, but you're also going to get the die sets that coordinate with the uh, frisky felines and the playful pups. They will come on one of our magnetic sheets. These are by Stampin' Storage. So two of these equals the same size as their five by seven sheets so they can sit into their storage system together. And that comes free with the dies. And another thing you may not have known about Gina K Designs dies is that all of our does, dies are already um, cut apart for you. So you get them just like this. You don't have to cut them apart at all. They're just ready to grab and use. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to grab my Misty. This is the mini Misty I'm going to use today. And I'm going to put this piece of Gina K Designs Artist Choice cardstock inside. And then the stamp that I'm going to use is this little puppy. This looks just like my little Teddy. So I'm very partial to this little guy. And I'm going to pick him up with my Misty. And of course, you can space this out so you can stamp tons of these on one piece of cardstock. But I'm just going to do it right there in the middle for the video. So I'm going to ink that up with some of this Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then I'm going to stamp that. And I know I got that all over the lid, but that's okay. All right, so he is stamped. Then I'm going to choose a greeting. So I am going to use the greeting, you make my tail wag. That's a cute one. Boy, that could be for so many things, a little thank you card or a birthday card or whatever you want it to be, just a friendship card. And I'm gonna also stamp that with the Memento Tuxedo Black. I'm gonna just stamp that right on this piece of sweet mango cardstock. So that is ready to go. Now I'm going to put that aside, and then I'm going to color this little pup. All right, so I'm going to grab my darkest Copic marker here. And remember, I am not a Copic coloring marker expert at all. If you want to see some great Copic coloring, you can find lots of great artists on YouTube. But I am going to color this little guy my way. It may not be the right way, but... I'm going to get there. So you can see I'm just kind of feathering in some of this color. This is the color of my little Pomeranian Teddy. And if you haven't seen my dog, I do post pictures of Teddy a lot on both Facebook and Instagram. And she's just a fun little dog. She is almost 14 years old now and she still looks and plays and acts like a puppy other than her few little aches and pains. So I know a lot of you out there have dogs and you have cats and they are our fur babies and I have always wanted a stamp set that in our collection that has little puppies and kittens and just features little cute little animals. So when my daughter was home visiting, she was just drawing cute little cats. And I said, oh my goodness, those are adorable. I would love to make a stamp set out of those. And she said, okay, mom, I'll help you. So she drew all of these for me. And I am so excited, beyond excited. Okay, so you can see I'm just kind of coloring around the perimeter with this darker color. And of course, you can make your little puppy looks like a little fox. Your little puppy, any color you want. I'm going to add a few more little strokes. You can see I don't really care too much that I have strokes in this because that's kind of making it look a little bit more furry. Okay, so now I'm going to go with that lighter orange, the YR12, and I'm going to bring some of that color in. And I'm just coloring right over that darker one to blend. You can see how that's kind of blending as I just smoosh the two colors together. Just kind of pulling the other color out and blending it with the lighter one.
and again I'm not worried about getting real smooth strokes because this is a this is a puppy and they're very textured <laughs> so it's okay to have strokey stroke marks all over the place I had uh, Kathy Rakusen come to Village Paper and Ink for the 30-day coloring challenge road tour and she taught us all kinds of fun ways to create texture and fur and I'll be doing some of those with this set at a later date all right and now I'm going to grab this YR 0, 0, 0, 0, 4 zeros in there and I'm just going to kind of fill in some of these areas here and pull this down onto the feet now it's funny my teddy has white paws mostly white paws even though she's orange a lot of parts of her fur are very white but I don't want to leave them white because they're not really white there isn't really you know a stark white on her it's more just really super light and then it kind of goes into a white but it's just very very light fur and then I think I'll bring in some more of this color in here and pull some of that in there like that and I'm gonna put a little bit of the orange down here toward her feet and then blend that back in now one thing Kathy taught us was to use the zero pen which is the colorless blender pen to add some uh, texture just by kind of dotting it so I'm going to do that too in a minute I just want to blend up here around little Teddy's face okay so now I'm going to grab that let's grab this one here this is the E43 I'm going to color inside the mouth there and then I'm going to make that tongue pink with R32 all right I also want to dot the nose because my little dog's nose is black but you could color it in pink if your doggy's nose is pink and then I'm going to add some more strokes now Teddy's tail kind of kind of fans out like this kind of has like a part down the middle of it like that and then I'm going to add a couple more little strokes in here put a little few little strokes around the face like that then I'm going to take my colorless blender pen and I'm going to dot all over those little lines that I just made to add a little bit of furry texture in there and I'm just kind of bouncing up and down on it just to add kind of more kind of fuzzy texture and it kind of smooths the, the lines a little bit so they don't look quite as is sharp and it adds a little bit more fuzziness and fluffiness so there's my little teddy you can see kind of a fluff ball I'm also gonna lighten up around here because Teddy's chest is very white white orange compared to the rest of her I'm gonna add a little bit of white there all right so again I didn't work too hard on that I just kind of did it so that it looked fluffy and furry and so there's that now my next thing that I want to do is I want to grab this piece of cardstock now this is three and three quarters by five inch white this is the Gina K designs pure luxury and I'm going to cut a few things out using dies first all right so I'm going to grab my big shot and then I'm going to grab the tree die 
And I think I will just, let's see here, I'll grab a piece of black cardstock. I really just need the tops of the trees, so I'm just going to cut it like that. All right, and let me grab the other plate, put that on top, and I'm going to cut that out. Have a little piece of something there. And I'm going to now use this as kind of a stencil-y kind of thing. So I'll show you that in just a minute. So that's one thing I'm going to do. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find the little die here that matches the little Pomeranian dog. And I am going to, I'm not going to cut the dog out yet. I'm going to cut this piece of black out first. And I'm going to show you why I'm going to do that. Sometimes I have a little bit of trouble lining up my die on my stamped out image. I don't know if any of you guys have that, but sometimes I'll cut it out and I think I've got it perfectly straight the way it's supposed to look. And then I cut it out and it's just shifted just a little bit to the left or to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as my guide. So now that is exactly where I want it cut out. Okay. All right, so that's the way I want it to look when it's cut out. And I'm going to tape this little template down here. This way I know it's going to be nice and even. Now, since I've already cut that once, this die is going to drop in there. You're going to feel it. You're not going to be able to move it even when you pull it side to side because it's dropped down into that little guide that I just made. And now I'm going to cut that out, and that's going to hold it in place for me. Now it may not cut all the way through because I've got a piece of thicker cardstock on top. So let's see what happened. Oh, it did cut fine. All right, and you can see now that's perfectly even all around. That doesn't always happen for me because sometimes it shifts. And by making that little template first and then fitting the blade, that little blade that's on that die into that groove, that'll just hold everything nice and secure. And you can use this same template over and over again to cut out your little pieces on any project that you're working on. So that's just a little trick. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is cut this out. And I'm going to cut this out using this silver circle and I'm going to cut it out so that it's leaning down toward the bottom and the right. So I'm going to cut that out next. We're going to do all our die cutting right now. Okay. So now I have that and then I'm going to cut this little um, inverted circle out of some black. All right, Let's see, I need to put that down there. Cut that out next. And then my final cut is going to be on a piece of pure luxury white. So I have my black one there. And then my last one is the purple dye. And I'm going to cut that out of a piece of, I want to make sure I'm not grabbing the wrong one the Pure Luxury White cardstock. So these three little sets of dies by Cherry Lynn Design, they, Cherry Lynn Designs, they work really nicely together. So you get kind of a layered look where the black will go on, on the white and create that little beaded edge, and then the orange will go on top of it, and that gives you a nice little texture around the edge. So you can find those at Cherry Lynn Designs website. All right, so now I have that. Now it's time to use this weird looking thing. Okay, so I have a sponge dauber here and I'm going to use some of the Ocean Mist ink. I'm gonna ink up my dauber real well and then I'm going to use this as a template to create clouds. So I'm gonna just kinda of go along here like that you can see that gives it a very interesting edge. Now I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to kind of come in this way. 
like that. Now I'm going to come down over here like that. I'm going to flip it over again and change the direction just a little bit. I'm going to keep adding. Does not look like clouds? It's so fun and so easy and it's a great use of this tree die. You might have some dies that you look at in your collection and think, oh my goodness, well, you know, that is just such a weird shape, but it might be the perfect shape for doing something like this. So look through and see what you have. You may even have this die already in your collection if you purchased our Merriam Bright Stamp TV kit. All right, I'm gonna continue to make my clouds. All right, just gonna flip that over and kind of turn it this way a bit. Now I'm getting kind of low here, which I'm gonna be doing something else with, but for now, that's all right. I can still kind of go low here, even though I'm gonna cover it, just in case any of it shows. We'll just do a little bit more here. And there, okay. So that is a really fun little cloudy looking background, all using this little tree die. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and do a little bit more die cutting because I forgot to cut out some of these ovals. Now what I'm gonna use for the ovals is, I'm going to use some of the Jelly Bean Green cardstock going to cut a quick piece of it over here off camera. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this piece into my Big Shot and then I'm going to cut this oval like this and I'm also going to cut this oval. Okay, so I'll cut those out together. I'm going to get two ovals. Here's the bigger one. This one didn't cut all the way through because I was off the machine. So let's cut that again. Cut another little piece here. That should fit through. Make sure I have that all the way up onto the machine this time. All right. And that time we got it all. All right, so I have a big oval and a medium oval. And that is all I'm going to need to create my little hills. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab a small paper trimmer and this piece of cardstock. And I am going to cut this oval in half doesn't have to be completely in half. It can be a little bit heavy on one side or the other. Okay, and then this one is going to go up on top like that. Then I'm gonna cut this one in half this way. And then I'm gonna grab some tape. So I'm going to lay this out the way I want it. So I'm going to have a hill back here, kind of coming off the side there. Then I'm going to have one in the center. I think I'll have one coming up this way, like that. And one coming up this way. So that's the layout that I'm going to have. All right, so we'll start by laying this one down. Just lay that a little off to the side. And we're gonna have this one coming in this way. And this one coming in off the side here. And then this last one 
coming up here. Okay. Actually, I think I'm going to slip this on top here. Let's see how that would look. Yeah, that would look good. Let's see how that looks. Okay, we'll try it. I'm going to cut these down now and see what happens. Now, I still think this one needs to be underneath. We'll do it this way. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to cut the side off here like this. And then I'm going to cut this other side off by flipping it around. You can see how I'm just flipping it around and lining it up on the side here. Let's see if you can see that I'm lining it up right here so that the measurement stays the same. And then I'm going to trim it off the bottom like that. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that's fun. I have some little pieces there. But you can see I have cute little hills. All right, so now I want to add that greeting. First, I want to tape it all together. It's kind of thick, but let's tape this onto here. Make sure that's centered well. And then the whole thing is going to get taped onto this white piece to create that cute little beaded edge. Let's move that over a little bit. Okay, looking good. And now I want the whole thing to be up in the corner here, like that. So I'm going to tape that right up here like that. All right, then I'm going to cut that off. You can see what's happening here. I'm just trimming that excess off of there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, lining that all up. And that gives me almost like the sun is coming in off of the side. So now I have a cute little scene that I've created. And I'm going to grab the rest of my card here and I'm going to mount this together. So this piece is going to go onto my black onyx piece. Like that. And then the whole thing is going to go onto my Ocean Mist card base. All right. So there's my cute little scene. And now it's time to add Teddy. So I'm going to use some of these little foam squares. Just going to grab a couple of them. And I'll put Teddy right about here. I keep calling it Teddy. That's my little dog, Teddy. <laughs> and then I'm going to add the bone. I want to show you a couple of cute new acrylic blocks that we just had made. This is the Gina K Designs round block, and it's beveled, so it's very easy to hold, and it's really tiny. And I can use that for this little bone. I can also use this new little square. It's not really a square, it's a little rectangle block by Gina K Designs. This is this is like a, a one inch round block and this is one inch by one and a half inches. So this is perfect for small greetings and things because it's got that cute little grid all lasered into it. So it's easy to 
kind of line things up and it's also beveled on the side which is very comfortable so these are two new blocks that are in our store now all right i'm going to grab some of that charcoal brown and then i'm going to ink up this little bone and finish off my card with a little a little doggy bone here I'm just going to put it in the grass right here there we go so there is my finished card project I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV video. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more videos, and thanks so much for watching.